Hello, hello, hello. Okay, thank you for coming. My name is Patrick Curran. I am the chairperson of the Java Community Process Organization. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I will talk briefly about how you can get involved and help uh, Java to evolve. Uh, I do have a longer BOF session this evening, so uh, if you want to ask questions or learn more, please come to that. I forget the time, but you can look it up. Anyway, uh, welcome. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is Juggy, the uh, mascot for Java user groups created by Bruno Souza from Brazil. Um, where does Java come from? It doesn't come like this, handed down from on high, like Moses going up the mountain and coming down with, with the answer. That's not the way it works. Um, this isn't Windows. Uh, with Windows, basically what you get is what you get, wiggy wig. Microsoft decides, uh, and if you're a very big customer, they may consult you, but uh, basically what you get is what they decide you will get, uh, hence the disaster that was Windows 8. Java's not done that way. Java is developed by everybody, so what you get is what we all create collectively. <coughs> um, we develop standards for Java through the Java Community Process Organization. A standard is basically a particular specification for a piece of Java technology. Um, we have a formal process for developing these standards. Um, I won't go into details here. Uh, you can look it up uh, online. If you go to jcp.org, you will find a link to the process document, which defines the formal process of proposal, review, voting, and so on and so on. And the specification is published at several stages, and uh, there are formal votes by the executive committee of the JCP, and eventually at the other end, uh, after collective work by a number of people, we end up with a, a standard for a, for a new or revised Java technology. So I'm not going to talk more about how the process works. I'm going to talk about how you can get involved. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about the way it works. We have what I call our constitution. It's a document. Well, there are two documents, actually, that define how we do our work. Um, let's talk, uh, we'll talk for a moment about how we change those documents because we've made a series of changes over the past few years to make it easier for people to participate. Um, we use the process itself to, to change the way we operate. We figured, okay, we have documents that define how the organization is structured. There are two of them. The first is called the JSPA, Java Specification Participation Agreement. This is the legal contract that you sign when you, uh, when you join the organization. The second one is the process document that I just talked about. And in order to change the way the JCP works, we have to change one or both of these documents. Since we have a process for creating and revising documents, that's the process itself, we use that same process to change the documents that define how we operate. Um, so, uh, as I say, we, uh, we file a JSR, basically, to say we're going to revise one or other of these documents. And this JSR goes through the same process as a JSR for any technical specification. Um, over the past few years, as I said, we've uh, created a, we've launched a series of JSRs, uh, four altogether, which collectively we call jcp.next, meaning the way to define the next version of the way the JCP functions. And I'll talk briefly about uh, those that we've been working on and those that we are still working on. The first one was simple. Um, this is how people used to think that the expert groups, which are the groups within the JCP that devise the specifications, this is how people used to think they operated. A bunch of guys in a closed room uh, working in secret. There was some truth to that. Uh, certainly some uh, expert groups did operate in a rather uh, secluded manner. We said no more of that. We want you to do all your work out in the open. We want you to publish all your materials. We want you to have a public issue tracker so that people can see the things that you're concerned with, that people can actually comment on them. You must uh, respond to comments that you get from the public and so on. Uh, we did this back in 2011. Uh, it was very non-controversial. Everybody said, yeah, obviously, things should be done out in the open. And it completed very quickly, and the result was a significant increase in interest on the part of regular developers to participate in and, and to watch and to help with what was going on. And in particular, we got a large number of Java user groups began to get involved, and they created a program we call Adopt, Adopt a JSR, which I'll talk about in a moment. 
The second of these JSRs was very simple. We used to have two executive committees, one for Java ME, one for Java SE and EE combined. We smushed them together into one. Don't need to say any more about that. That was an even simpler one. The third one, JCP, uh, dot next dot three as we call it or JSR number 358 is big and complicated and scary and the reason for that is that we are going to be modifying the JSPA which is that legal document that I talked about this hasn't been significantly modified in more than 10 years um, it uh, times are different now from where, when this was first created so clearly we understand we need to change it but it's kind of like legacy code you've got to be really careful with legal documents you often don't understand exactly why certain words or terms were used and if you're not careful you're going to break it so we have to be very careful plus it is a legal document so all the lawyers for all the executive committee members of the JCP are also involved and of course it takes forever it is important because this is the document that defines the way intellectual property rights are granted and how things are licensed and so on. Um, I won't say more about that other than to say we are continuing to work on this, um, but in the process of working on this we realized it was going to take a long time. There were certain other things we were working on that we thought were important and we wanted to get them uh, completed more quickly, so we spun off yet another JSR 364. Uh, and this one focuses on membership and basically changes in the membership classes to make it easier for individuals such as yourselves to participate. Um, so basically the goal is to encourage more individuals to participate while still making sure that we have all the appropriate IP commitments. We're going to create a new membership class we call Associate members Membership. Uh, you'll be able to sign this membership agreement by yourself at the moment. If you want to be a full member of the JCP, you have to get your employer's permission, which can be difficult. And in particular, there's one benefit that will come with this associate member class. You will be able to get formal, if you're participating and helping with a particular JSR, you will be able to get formal recognition as a contributor to that JSR. Today, the only way to get that kind of recognition is to be a full member of the expert group, which takes a significant uh, time commitment and does require significant expertise. We now have an easier way for people to make smaller contributions and to get formal recognition for them. And obviously, if you're going out, it's going to be good for your career. If you're going out looking for a job, you have two candidates. Both of them say, I know this technology. But one of them says, not, in, not only do I know it, but I help to create it. There's my name up on the web page on jcp.org. Obviously, uh, that's going to help you get the job. So we're doing all this stuff out in the open. You'll be able to follow us if you go to java.net. We're trying to make sure that the JCP really is a community-driven organization, um, trying to reduce barriers to entry so that everybody can participate. Uh, so we're encouraging everybody to get involved. Um, as an individual, um, we want you to do this not just because it is a good thing to do, but actually because it will be good for you. Um, we used to encourage people to join as individuals, and we discovered that when they did, they got kind of lost. They didn't know, okay, now I'm a member, now what do I do? I can't be an expert on an expert group. We realized eventually that joining through Java user groups is the way to go. The, collectively, a Java user group can decide to help or to take part in a particular JSR, and this way you have someone to hold your hand, someone to learn from, and so on. We have a significant number of Java user groups who are active participants. Uh, we have all of these guys are user groups that are members of the JCP. Um, it's easy to join the JCP, there are no fees associated with it. We have two Java user groups who are on the executive committee, so Java from Brazil and the London Java community, and both of them uh, have made significant contributions to the work of the JCP, primarily by creating this program, Adopt a JSR, which is a simple way for Java user groups to say, we're interested in a particular technology, let's see what we can do to help. Um, there are a number of reasons why this is a good idea. I don't need to go into them here because I think we all recognize that uh, things that are driven and, and, and where developers contribute, you're much more likely to get something that is useful and uh, useful in the real world than something that was designed by a bunch of people from big corporations in, in a back room somewhere. <clears throat> it's good for the user group itself. It brings you publicity. Um, but from your own personal point of view, it's good for your career. You'll build your network. You, you, not only 
uh, advance your technical skills, but more importantly, you build a whole bunch of what I call soft skills, verbal, written communications, negotiation, collaboration, teamwork, and so on. All of these things are skills which distinguish a good engineer from uh, a really skillful, successful engineer who is likely to be promoted, and so on. So, you know, doing this work is good for you. We have a large number of user groups have already participated uh, from all over the world, South America, North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, Middle East. They've uh, created a number of things, including the Belgium jug here, uh, did some work for Java EE7. Uh, so there are several examples here of the kind of things that people are doing. They can be building test cases, they can be building test applications, they can be helping to debug uh, the implementation as it's developed and so on. Um, we had a total of 18 user groups uh, participate in uh, Java EE7 from all over the world. As I said, here are some of their logos. And um, there are a number of things that you can do. You, you start by joining, oops, joining the JCP as a user group. Uh, there are ways that you can talk directly to the spec lead. You can ask them what help they need. And you can do anything from something simple like commenting on a mailing list or doing lightning talks or helping with documentation down to more complicated and technical things, uh, organizing hack days, helping with uh, triaging issues, giving feedback on the design, writing test applications to verify that the APIs are well designed, uh, even build the uh, conformance test suite. So a number of ways to participate from the very simple, not so technical to quite technical. So you don't have to be a super expert in a particular technology to do something useful. If you just read the spec and give some feedback, and if you don't understand it, that's not your fault, it's the fault of the guys who wrote it, because they're writing these APIs and the specifications for people like you, and if they're not understandable by people like you, they've done something wrong, they want to know that, and uh, you can tell them. We have a number of JSRs that are working their way through the process at the moment that you could get involved with. Here are some examples. Um, and just uh, some screenshots here showing we have a home page for Adopter JSR on Java.net. There is a page for Java EE where you can see what JSRs are available and what help people are looking for. Um, there is a matrix where you can kind of enter some data about what you're working on. Uh, this is a sample JSR page on jcp.org. And people do share resources, test cases, uh, applications, and so on, on GitHub. So there's quite a lively community out there already, and they're looking for you to join them. Um, you can also, if you're interested, participate in the actual implementation as opposed to the design of the, the, the platforms or the technologies by working through OpenJDK, which is an open source project that develops the implementation of Java SE, or by Project Glassfish, which develops the implementation of Java EE. So, large number of ways you can get involved. I'm almost out of time here. So, the overall message is uh, Java's been around now 20 years, as you know, this is the 20th anniversary. I don't know if it's going to last to the 25th century, but it'll certainly last for a long time. And what Java is going to look like in the future is going to be determined, hopefully, by you guys, because it's you who are going to help everybody else who is in the Java community to develop Java and to move it forward. So that's it from me. I'll be talking again and uh, more informally at ABOF this evening. So if you have uh, questions or feedback or whatever, or just want to learn more, please come along then. Thank you. That's it from me.